Well, and he'd, he'd been away uh, from Chesterfield, came back uh, with John Duncan in charge, and the 84-85 season, memorable for me, it was my first, as, uh, first season as programme editor, but with yourself teaming up with the likes of uh, Bob Newton, Phil Walker, it turned out to be a memorable season, and, and of course your second promotion uh, uh, with the club. Yeah, it was for Chesterfield, my second promotion, um, but I was playing on and off because I was getting older. Yeah. But <laughs> Phil Walker and me, we were you know, on and off, and uh, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. But it, it was a side full of characters, I mean there's a, a, a dearth of characters in the game today, but people like Newt, yeah. Steve Kendall, Sean O'Neill, Brian Ferguson, larger than life weren't they? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, it, it, was, it was different to the, the, the 70s, um, and when Newt was there he was working his socks off uh, most of the time. Sometimes he wasn't, but, <laughs> um, but it, was, it was a good game. But because I was getting older and John Duncan kept saying, you're going on this particular day and Wack is going to go on you know, another day, then that's how it works. In, in, in terms of John Duncan, very professional, uh, everybody knew the job when they went on the park, didn't they? Oh yes, yeah. I mean, John Duncan and Kev Randall, and they were, they were working really well. And we did get promotion, so that, that, was, that was excellent. There were a few uh, blips along the way. I, I remember on New Year's Day going down to uh, Swindon and we were the ultra-professional side, always nick a 1-0 when you needed it, and came away against a very average uh, Swindon side, having uh, lost four goals to nil. Yes, uh, yeah. Um, and yeah. I, I know it wasn't at Saltergate, but uh, I think there'd been quite a bit of uh, goings on in Chesterfield before the, uh, before the event, hadn't there? Well, it wasn't me. <laughs> oh, of course. But, but um, there were probably only two or three of our players, including me, that worked our socks off at Swindon. And the others, I'm afraid, had enjoyed themselves previously and got drunk. I do believe it might have been a bit of Hogman, eh? Brian Scrimgeour was injured yeah, at the time, yeah. may have been the host, he, he, he could be the man. Christmas, New Year's time, they really enjoyed themselves, but because they got down there, and you're quite right, they were drinking a little bit too much, then Swindon hammered us. Uh, and your partner that day was Bob Newton, but I don't think he'd been on the pop, had he? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he was playing at... No, he wasn't playing with me up front, he was just staggering with me up front. <laughs> but I mean, the, the, the whole uh, season, uh, that season, it was a, about being metronomically uh, uh, efficient, wasn't it, really? Oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah. uh, 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 and then the, the, the one or two magic players like Phil Brown was, was a youngster who was oh, coming little in. Phil. Little Phil was quality, I mean, he still is. And um, I mean, all the front lads and, uh, played, played very well, but once we, we left Swindon, I did have a one, one or two words with, with Bob Newton and slapped his wrist and, uh, <laughs> and then he, he changed himself and got really going again. Oh, one person who's escaped on the uh, drinking thing, of course, is Chris Marples, because he came into, <laughs> uh, he came into the, the side that season a little bit like, like Alan Stevenson had done yes. in 69-70, uh, in hadn't he, from, yeah. from nowhere and, and, and took the world by storm, really. Yeah, well, I mean, Chris, he did come in and he's, he's still... He plays cricket and football, mm. and he's still, he was still a, 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 good, a good keeper. Um, but I, I liked Alan Stevenson a bit better, to be honest. <laughs> and uh, in terms of when it was getting to the, uh, to the, to the business end, <coughs> promotion all but mathematically uh, won when I think it was Les Hunter scored at, uh, at, at Stockport County. Yes. And, and you must have all realised that that was it, even though I think a bit of goal, goal difference uh, needed to still come into it. But that must have been great after Les's it goal. Yeah, it was. It was, it was good, um, particularly because I was sat on the bench because uh, Wacky was, was, was playing away from home and I was sat there um, and I watched it and Les did score a great goal. And it was, it was incredible but they had to really work themselves out to keep that three points. Then mathematical certainty came in midweek without a game, Chesterfield, I think it was uh, Chester City, Stuart Rimmer scored a couple of goals to beat Hereford and, yes. and Hereford not winning. I remember going over to uh, Sealand Road uh, that night. So were, were you and the guys keeping an eye on that result on, on that evening? I know it's not as easy then, with, with, you know, there's no CFAX and no... Uh, I think all, uh, the, all the time, satellite. you know, um, all the players we do sort of look at things and uh, we try to see whether it's going to be a win, a draw, whether we're going to lose or win, and we do that all the time. Mm. But now, particularly, I just watch the game on weekends. Yeah. Now, how frustrating was it? Here we are sitting at Saltergate, home of the football club since uh, 1871, that 
in the promotions that, that you were involved with and your, your, your partner Kevin Randall uh, as well they were never here uh, 69, 70 away at uh, Exeter the day it was clinched yeah. 84, 85 not playing then in, in, 1990, uh, in, in 94, 95 down at, at, at Wembley how frustrating is it that, yeah, it was, that, 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 that you know, in our lifetimes we've never seen promotion here no that was, <coughs> that was peculiar but <coughs> Um, when we came back from, from Exeter and we'd already got promotion, we played the last game here against, was it Peterborough? Yeah, I think so, yeah. And we beat them 3-1 and then all the crowd was on, this, on, on, on the pitch with us and we were with, with, the, uh, with the trophy and it was great. Well, but, but we didn't actually, yeah. as you're quite right, uh, at Exeter mm. it was away from home. And, and clinching the championship in 84-85 again was similar. It was clinched away at Peterborough. Massive, massive following on that uh, yes. that end. Uh, a, a nil, nil drawn. I remember all the players who were still fences around the Quite ground. Right. Then going and uh, shaking hands with the supporters and everything yeah. through the uh, fences. But then came back here for the final match. A little bit like the the game in 69-70 played uh, 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 against Rochdale and a seven and a half thousand crowd because the crowds that season have been quite disappointing and it was great to have a full house that day. Yeah, it was, it? it was. I mean, particularly earlier than that, there were even more than, than, than mm. 7,000. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, that's changed a little bit, but you're quite right. Um, when, when we were down at Peterborough and we drew 0-0, um, we really worked our socks off and, uh, yeah, that, 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 that got us OK. And of course, the, the, the season ended on, you know, dreadful note really we'd all celebrated uh, on, on that day me me included in the boardroom and somebody had said to me well, there's been a bit of a fire at Bradford oh was there a problem no no I don't think so and then of course we all got home after the celebrations and, and saw the uh, the scale of it well as, as I was going out for the celebrations and I saw it on the television and um then it, you know, I just watched it a little, little bit, mm. and it was really, really yeah. a, a massive problem. Mm. Um, it was shocking, and, mm. and my wife Jen and me, we, we were upset about it. Mm. Well, I think we all were when we when we saw it. It was yeah. you know, so in your in your face, and you know, I know we were watching recordings, but uh, as if it was happening there and there. Oh, and of it course, so it good. it changed the face of of Saltergate, where we sit. We had to bring all the. Uh, uh, um, fire exits and everything yeah. uh, in and took the enclosure yeah. away which I always yeah. used to love standing in the enclosure yeah. I mean uh, even in those days as well they, they put big fences all the way around mm. um, all over the country and uh, I, don't, I don't think I like that either you know because at Sheffield Wednesday that was a major problem wasn't it when the fences uh, wouldn't allow people up to the pitch so they've changed that but you're quite right. I mean, I just like the old days when it was a, mm. a proper pitch. Yeah. So, uh, of, of those two promotions that you had at Chesterfield, <coughs> 69, 70, 84, 85, which, which is the one that gave you the most satisfaction? The first one. Um, because, you know, I was just young and uh, Kev Randall, Pewey, um, yeah, yeah, all, all of them, John Archer, uh, Fennessy, even Alan Stevenson. Mm. I just enjoyed it. Mm. And the, the second one, of course, Kevin Randall, uh, still there him, himself yes, and yourself, sure. synonymous with, with the club through through the 60s, 70s and beyond. Yeah, um, I mean, we even we even got um, promotion at Mansfield when Kevin was with, with me at Mansfield. So I didn't uh, want to mention that. I know exactly, but but <laughs> Kevin, Kevin and me, we played we played together yeah. because we were completely different, but mm. decent. You know, I was just an ordinary plank up front, mm. and he was a quality played across the ball. Well, the one thing that I, I I liked about football in those days was, it, you know, one to eleven game. Your number was always number eight. And you've got your number eight shirt here from that eighty four eighty five uh, 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 season. I can remember. Yes. I can remember when you came back uh, um, for your second debut and came on as a sub at Exeter, I think number twelve. And I, I don't did. think I don't think I'd ever seen you in anything no. other than number eight. No, uh, that that was dead right because I was sat on the bench. Um, when I'd come back and uh, yeah it was number 12 but mm. I much preferred to say please can I have a number 8 on the yeah. back which yeah. I did and uh, that's that's what I like because Kevin was number 9 and I mm. was number 8 yeah and is, is it has it become your favourite number 8 or uh, oh, number 8 yeah, yeah all over you know uh, every other club as well but um, my original shirt the, the old one I like that even bit better because it's yeah. just a basic one yeah it was good and of course, by by the time '84, we've got Colite on the uh, yeah. the front of the shirts. Local uh, company, one of the longest sponsorships has ever been, actually. On yes, uh, the Colite one. The Colite's there, but uh, I don't think it's uh, it's gone now, hasn't it, Colite? Yeah, it's gone. Uh, and it'd be sad to see it go, won't it? Yes, it will. I mean, I I thought the, the actual ground itself is superb. I still like to see the plain surface and everything. Mm. But when it's gone, it's gone. There'll be a new one. We move on. We'll move on.